Welcome back to my horror manga collection. Hello and welcome back to another one of my horror manga collection tour videos. This time around, we're going to be looking at something different from last time. Last time we went through the Junji Ito shelf. So uh, if you want to check that out, make sure you check the first part of this video series. Today we are going to be moving over here to the Hideshi Hino shelf. Uh, as you can see, this is a mixed shelf with Hino's work as well as Shintaro Kago's work and some others. Uh, we are going to be looking at those in a separate video, so sorry to anybody who saw the shirt that I'm wearing today. This is not a Kago video, but we will do a whole video on that later. So for right now, it is just going to be the Hideshi Hino shelf, and uh, I've got a lot of cool stuff to show you guys, so come in a little closer and we'll go through everything one by one. Here it is, folks, the Hideshi Hino shelf. Uh, this is a video I was really excited to make because the Junji Ito videos out there are a dime a dozen. That's all you hear anybody talking about when it comes to horror manga these days. Uh, and I was really excited to finally jump into something uh, a little bit more obscure. Still one of the grandfathers of horror manga as we know it. So not as obscure as some other artists we're going to get into later. But uh, I have a feeling uh, any of you who read Junji Ito's work or follow horror manga in any way uh, will probably see some stuff you've never seen before and maybe learn something in this video. So the first thing in order on my shelf is this. It's a small Japanese Hideshi Hino comic. Uh, this one, uh, as I mentioned before, I buy a lot of uh, horror manga from Mandarake, which is a website that ships Japanese comics to Westerners. They'll ship from one of their store locations overseas. I picked this up for literally like a dollar, so I figured why not, and I grabbed it. I don't even know exactly what this one is. Uh, Actually, I believe this one is English in one of the anthologies that I have, so uh, this is not uh, something that I got because I needed it, just something kind of cool that I threw in with an order. So the next thing you'll see on this shelf is the Hino Horror series. So this is an ongoing series that went on for 14 volumes, and it basically collects a large number of Hideshi Hino's published short stories. So these are uh, something that will probably appeal to anyone who's interested in like uh, Junji Ito's collected short story volumes, like his Fragments of Horror title and things like that. Uh, this is similarly just all kinds of different stories, all kinds of different themes, uh, even all kinds of different art styles. There's something for everybody in this series. So uh, I would say this is one of the best places to start with Hideshi Hino. Unfortunately, some of these volumes are getting more expensive, but uh, they're not as expensive as some of the horror manga that you can find out there that can get into the even hundreds of dollars sort of range. So these are a really good place to start. And uh, as you'll see when I go through a few of these, depending on what your interests are in horror manga, you'll probably find something for you in these. So the first book in the series is The Red Snake. And uh, this is a really, really cool volume. This is one that has a lot of similarities to some of Hino's other more famous works. Uh, one of the series that Hino is most known for is his uh, Panorama of Hell series, which is basically a very loose semi-autobiographical semi semi work uh, that basically follows this sort of twisted artist in his crazy hellscape life and all the bizarre things that happen to him. And we're going to talk more about that book when we get to it. But this is another similar sort of work which follows uh, a main character which again almost seems like a sort of proxy for Hino in his childhood as he goes through his house and you meet all of his strange twisted family members and all of the horrible things they do to him and to each other. Uh, it's a really dark uh, interesting sort of read, but uh, Hino's style always remains quite playful. And uh, his characters, I'll see if I can flip it to a page that, uh, yeah, this is safe for work. Uh, they have a nice sort of cartoonish style to them almost. So uh, this is one that uh, leans into the cartoonier side of his style. He does branch out from that style from time to time. And uh, his style will appeal to different people depending on the work. So if you're interested in like 
Tim Burton type stuff, or if you, like me, read a lot of like Joan and Vasquez's work uh, when I was in high school, like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and all that, uh, this sort of cartoony dark style will really appeal to you. It's uh, very different from typical horror manga fare. So, uh, this one is just the first volume in that series. So the second volume in that series is called The Bug Boy. Uh, this is another good one. This is a, a really interesting one to read knowing that Hino's works back when they came out were not necessarily adult works. Nowadays, Hino's works are known for being some of the more gory, twisted, really like dark psychological horror manga out there. Uh, but back in the day, was, kids would read this stuff. They could even find it in their, their library or pick these up and read them. Uh, it's strange for us in the West to think of some of these books as being something that kids could get their hands on. Uh, but they're really kind of like uh, over in the West, we have things like scary stories to tell in the dark where you'll hear people commonly say, I can't believe I was allowed to read that when I was a kid. That like scarred me for life. But they'll say it in a kind of good way. And uh, that's something that a lot of fans of Hino will say about his work that they found it when they were kids and they look back on it now and they're like that's kind of messed up oh my god <laughs> and this is that kind of thing it's a uh, cautionary tale uh, about a boy who turns into a bug and goes and eats the bullies <laughs> and it's violent and horrific and amazing so highly recommend this one it's a really good read so the next ones i have here are numbers three and four which are both the uh, the same sort of theme which is uh, using characters called uh, Oninbo and the Bugs from Hell. And these ones, honestly, are pretty middling for me. They're fun just because they're Hino's art style, and uh, it comes with all of the, the dark charm that he's known for, but uh, I find these ones are really kind of too silly, and uh, he's almost trying to make these lovable characters, but I personally find them kind of obnoxious and... I don't know, too infantile. Uh, some of you might like these volumes, but uh, I suspect because these are the two cheapest volumes to get out of this series, they're uh, probably... <laughs> I'm probably not alone in thinking that these aren't too great, uh, but still worth having, and definitely if you want to finish the set, grab these. So next up we have Living Corpse. Uh, this one basically just follows a character who turns into a zombie, more or less, and it follows them through their afterlife, I was gonna say life, but not quite, as they just deal with being a zombie, being this abhorrent creature, uh, seeing familiar folks from their life, and uh, it's just uh, a really interesting take on the zombie genre. It's uh, done in Hino's usual, more cartoonish style, and it has his usual theme of it being a sort of cautionary tale as opposed to just creating a situation and saying, oh, well, let's just see what happens. Uh, it, it always carries this sort of uh, philosophical vibe in these works where he's almost warning you or making some sort of social commentary. So a really cool read. Uh, I didn't realize I actually have two of this. I think I just bought the other one by accident. I didn't even notice that I have two of it until the other day when I was just getting ready to make this video. So yeah, I have a bad habit of doing that. So next up we have Black Cat. This is a really, really, really cool book. I highly recommend this one. This is basically a horror story, usual Hideshi Hino style storytelling. However, the protagonist is a black cat. And it's really, really cool to read a horror manga that just literally follows a black cat as the protagonist. I've never seen any other horror manga that takes this approach. And uh, it's something you do see in other types of manga, especially classic manga, you'll see works from like uh, Tezuka that follow animal characters around, but uh, I've never seen anything like that in horror, and this is a really, really charming book that easily skirts the areas between horror and some actually horrifying scenes and the sort of thing you expect from Hino, and just scenes that are actually adorable and really, really endearing. Uh, so I feel like this accomplishes what he was probably trying to do with the Oninbo and the Bugs from Hell series, where he has these characters that he wants to seem playful and likable, uh, but it, it seemed too pushed in those ones. This one he really does succeed in creating a character that you just really like and want to follow and watch, and uh, I highly recommend it. I mean, come on. Just look at this guy. 
So the next up are volumes seven and eight, which are parts one and two of the collection. Uh, this is something that you see sort of recurring a lot in Hino's works, where he has this sort of stand-in character for Hino, who always introduces himself as the manga author, and he starts talking about how he creates manga, and that's his job, etc, etc, things that imply that he is Hideshi Hino, and it always goes to these dark places where he either shows you his hell paintings or the terrifying world he lives in full of death and decay and insane people or in the case of these volumes he shows you his collection which is a series of macabre disturbing things that he owns and he tells you the stories associated with them so it has this very uh, tales from the crypt style where there's an announcer setting up the story and sort of weaving them together in this sort of meta story but uh, using that as the introduction for a series of self-contained short stories. Uh, so these are really, really great in that sense, that they present short stories and they keep the short story theme from all of these volumes going, uh, but they also tie it into a, a larger narrative. Uh, so these are really, really good. There's a reason Hideshi Hino is most known for those crazy, unhinged, almost uh, self-depicting stories that he does. And uh, there are a few other stories he does in the same way, and uh, they're some of his most popular works. So uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend these ones. So next up we have volumes 9 and 10 of the series, Death's Reflection and Ghost School. And these are something really special in the Hino library, because these are something that are produced in more of a, an accessible manga style. These aren't depicting his usual cartoonish characters. They're almost like a, a shoujo kind of art style. There's something that would really appeal to anybody who likes Junji Ito's works and are looking for something that's sort of the, the next closest thing to that. I would say these actually resemble the works of Junji Ito, and you can almost see more influence from this than you do from the works of Kazuo Yumezu, which is uh, another one of his influences. Uh, but this really doesn't feel as dated as it probably should. Uh, it, they're really, really, really good stories. The scares are fantastic, the characters are interesting, uh, and as you can see, they're drawn in a way that is not typical for Hideshi Hino. They just look like actual, normal manga characters. Not cartoony, none of the big eyes. And not to say that that style isn't good, it's fantastic, but this is something that just, I think, will appeal to a wider audience of people. I think uh, that cartoony style may not necessarily be for everybody, but this is something that I think is going to be a really easy sell. So I would recommend these as probably the first purchase to make if you're looking to get into any of Hino's work and you're not quite sure if you're sold on his typical style and you're just getting into it from like Junji Ito and artists like that, uh, these would be the ones to get. So next up we have volume 11. This is Gallery of Horrors. This is uh, one that is a compilation series which has a number of short horror stories in it. So uh, that's a recurring theme in this set. Not only is this a set of shorter stories, but there are a number of books in this set that depict within themselves a bunch of even shorter stories. So this is really good for just rapid fire, quick read, gruesome horror stories. Next up we have Mystique Mandala of Hell. And this follows a little girl from hell on her adventures in the real world on Earth and all of the hapless people that she happens to come across and just terrible unfortunate things that happen to them as well as her own interactions with other spirits and forces and how those play out. So this is a really fun book. It's uh, not as horrifying as some of his other books in terms of like uh, having a, a character that is dealing with some horror. It's always a, a little bit different when the main character themselves is kind of horrific and is the perpetrator of a lot of the horror in the story, and that's just a fun, different kind of angle on it. So uh, a really good read, and you do get to see plenty of gruesome, horrible Hideshi Hino horror stuff in this book as well. So next up we have Zimpengu Night, 
which is another collection of short horror stories. So I won't say too much about this one. It's very similar to the, uh, the other one I just talked about there, the uh, Gallery of Horrors. And it is just another collection of short horror stories. It's a really, really good one. This is uh, probably one of the stronger ones in the series. And last but not least, we have volume 14, which is Skin and Bone. And this is another collection of short stories. However, they all follow the same theme, which is skeletons as well as self-image and things like anorexia and bulimia and uh, horror stories that are really sort of like cautionary tales as well as social commentary that follow those themes. So this is a really, really good book. And uh, I'm a sucker for skeletons. I like any horror story that is about skeletons. There's just something about them that I like. They're, they're kind of an underrated horror Halloween character, so really like the skeleton theme. So with this being the last one in the series, I should also say that if you're a collector out there and you're looking for all of the books in this Hino Horror series, you may find yourself stumbling across volumes 15 and 16 online. And that is because there are pictures of the covers of what those were supposed to look like uh, as they were announced by the publisher that was doing this series. However, this publisher, like many of the publishers back then, went under before they could finish this series. So those were actually never printed. So if you see a website listing volume 15 or 16, unfortunately, you probably can't actually buy it. Even if uh, it's an old website that still has the add to cart, I'm afraid they never got the books. This is the last one. So next up we have Lullabies from Hell. This is another one of the books that I've alluded to where Hideshi Hino himself is our sort of announcer and tour guide through these stories. Uh, so this follows Hideshi Hino, the crazed artist who paints with blood and lives in this hellish apartment and has this terrible life as he talks to you about a variety of different short stories that are all equally horrifying. So this is a book that used to be pretty inexpensive. Back when I bought this, it was like, I don't know, 10 to $20, and uh, that was all you would expect to pay for it. There were loads of copies around on the internet, uh, but they sold out as horror manga got more popular, and now you can expect to pay a good bit more than that for this book, unless you get lucky. You can certainly still find cheaper copies of this these days, but uh, be prepared to wait a while to find the right listing. Next, we've got a couple of Japanese volumes. I don't know what these are called, and I can't read the story, so I can't tell you too much about these. These are something I just picked up for the collection because uh, they were cheap and I wanted them, and let's be honest, the cover artwork of this one is super cool. Also, get a load of that back. I want a t-shirt with that on it. Next up, we have one of the coolest manga that I have from Hideshi Hino. And no, it has nothing to do with what this book is. This is just some random Hideshi Hino horror story in Japanese that I don't know the name of and can't read. But what makes this special is his autograph inside of the book. So this is a very rare item. You do not see a lot of Hideshi Hino signatures floating around online. Uh, and he's, he's getting older, unfortunately, so it's not going to be too much longer that these signatures are going to continue to be created. So uh, I hate to say that, but it's inevitable. These will eventually become very scarce and very hard to find. I lucked out and I got this on Mandarake, as I've mentioned a bunch of times, uh, and I paid uh, probably less than 50 bucks for this. It was kind of crazy, but as I've said before, don't buy any Japanese stuff on eBay because it's just Westerners buying that stuff and they've got all these import fees and all these shipping fees. And on top of that, they're trying to make a profit if they're selling it on eBay. So it's probably marked way up. You can actually just go buy stuff from Japan and pay the shipping and import fees yourself and still save a ton of money. So uh, this is not something that's about having a lot of money to buy these rare items all the time. It's just about looking and knowing where to look, looking consistently, and just putting in the time. This is something I had to look and wait a long time for and managed to get one of his signatures. So uh, definitely one of my favorite things in my collection. So next up, we've got Hell Baby. This is definitely one of his more popular stories. There's a reason this one was published in this nice big format uh, back in the 90s. 
at least I think 90s, could be 80s, but I'm pretty sure this is 90s. And uh, this is a really, really good story. It's about a child who gets abandoned in a dumpster and everything is horrible and she turns into this hell baby who is set on revenge and angry and hates everything and just goes on this vile murder eating people spree. So <laughs> I'm sure it needs no more introduction than that. It's really crazy. And uh, it's just a really fun read. The, the greatest thing about Hideshi Hino's work is as it ages, it becomes a little more tame just by virtue of being kind of old, and especially because he has this cartoony style. Uh, I feel like what once was probably obscene and controversial now is almost kind of charming in a funny way. It feels like, I mean, anyone who likes Tim Burton movies or, you know, John and Vesquez stuff, as I mentioned, is going to love this sort of dark, cartoony sort of style. I mean, just to give you an idea of he knows artwork. It's just terrible, but also kind of funny. <laughs> just watching a, a baby child drawn cartoonishly, just eating somebody's dog. <laughs> I probably look like a psychopath for laughing at that. And next we have his most famous and most infamous work, Panorama of Hell. This book is uh, amazing. This is as much it is a piece of almost uh, historical literature and just genuine art as it is a manga. This is a semi-autobiographical semi work by Hino, uh, following a character that is very clearly a stand-in for himself as this deranged horror manga author who paints with blood and all that stuff I've told you. His character has come up in other series of his, uh, of this sort of Hideshi Hino stand-in. However, this is the one that really goes deep into that. And instead of him just being an announcer for a bunch of short stories, it's him telling you about his own life and the world that he lives in and his family and talking about just the the poisoned dark sky and these rivers of blood and garbage that flow outside his house and talking about all these problems that his family members who are sadistic and psychotic have. But at the heart of that, it's really a look at post-World War II Japan and his experiences growing up in that environment. And it's sort of this uh, fantastical dark mirror of many things that I'm sure probably actually existed in his life. Maybe not quite in this exaggerated horror version, but uh, there are a lot of things in this book that you read and you can very easily see the parallel to what he's probably representing. The most wild thing about this book is that this was created at a very important time in Hino's life where his manga was just not selling and it was on a decline. The whole industry was on a decline and uh, he was just worried about not getting any more contracts and being out of work. He had no money and uh, he wrote this to sort of be his last manga. He was drinking heavily and just quickly flying through pages, putting this thing together in this drunken stupor. And uh, the atmosphere of this comic really is just like unhinged rambling. It feels so honest and sort of confessional in that sense that it's just a really haunting story that literally ends with Hideshi Hino being insane with an axe screaming that he's going to kill you and then actually killing you, the reader. So, uh, an insane, crazy wild ride to read. Highly recommend this. Uh, there's, uh, there's a reason this is his most known work. Unfortunately, for that reason, you're not going to be able to pay the uh, cover price of $9.95 for this. Uh, you're probably going to have to pay well over $100 for a copy of this. And uh, I mean, the last time I checked, that was the price. Now it's probably even more. So uh, definitely worth the money if you are a collector and you don't mind putting some money into something that is worth something that will certainly be worth more in the future. Uh, not to say that you should invest in your collections necessarily because you should probably just invest in that case, but uh, definitely not a bad place to park one or two hundred dollars if you think you will enjoy this and cherish this book. I've actually had a couple copies of this. This is the only one I've got left because uh, I sold my other copies because I mean, it's just too good. I can't 
have all the copies. <laughs> I don't want to hoard them. So I've sold the other ones on eBay so some other people can enjoy these. But uh, I used to have another one or two copies of this floating around. Next up we have Comics Underground Japan. This is a compilation book that includes both a story by Suhiro Maruo and a story by Hideshi Hino. So this is really worth getting if you're into horror manga. It's not that expensive. I think even these days you can pick this up for like $20, $30. So for two stories by those artists, as well as a whole bunch of other super, super cool comics from Japan, uh, this is definitely worth picking up. Next up, we have The Art of Hideshi Hino. This is a full color, hardcover book of artwork of Hideshi Hino. One of my favorite things about this is it really feels like a uh, like a school book, like a scholastic kind of thing, something you read at your school library. So thinking of that, and especially with this fun little title and stuff, knowing that it's Hideshi Hino's terrifying artwork, <laughs> it's just kind of a fun juxtaposition. But uh, this is a really cool book. It's nice and big. It's got full color art. So you can see some really beautiful Hideshi Hino work. I'm not sure if he works with acrylics, but uh, it does appear to be acrylic. And it's got this nice textured paper. It's not that glossy, cheap feeling stuff. Uh, so it's got a kind of uh, cool aesthetic to it. And in here, there's also a full color manga. So it's a full self-contained story that's in here in full color, completely painted in. So that's a really uncommon thing to see. This is one of the only books where you're going to get a full color horror manga and by one of the greats, no less. So absolutely worth picking up. This used to be one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest Hideshi Hino book you could get. Uh, back when I got this, I don't think I even paid 10 bucks for it. And uh, it held that price for a really long time. Now I think it costs a little bit more. It's probably $20, $30 or something like that now, but I believe this is still one of the cheaper Hideshi Hino books to get, so highly recommend it. Especially if you're more of like a casual fan of Hino, and uh, maybe his style isn't quite doing it for you, you don't like the cartoony stuff, but you do sort of appreciate the artistry. This is not an expensive investment and just a cool thing to have on your shelf if you're just an artist and want to look at art or you're just an art appreciator. So next we have something quite obscure and that is this. This is the Comics Journal Special Edition 2005. Uh, this is volume 5 and this is a weird thing man. It's a giant square thick heavy full color magazine. I don't know what the deal is exactly with this. I had never heard of the comics journal uh, until I found this, but uh, it basically it's an editorial journal where they analyze different comics. They go into depth uh, discussing different stories, different authors, and uh, it's, it's not a compilation of stories. You're not going to find a collection of manga in here, but it does go into depth about particular manga and comic artists. So this one's really special because not only is it a Hideshi Hino issue with this really cool big full color cover art of Hino's work, but it also has Suhiro Maruo in here as well. So uh, they go into depth analyzing both Maruo and Hino separately in their own sections of this, and they analyze specific stories by the authors, in particular Hino, and they go into depth sort of picking those stories apart, talking about the meaning of them, what they think about it, who Hideshi Hino is, what his influence is, and uh, it does that for a number of Hideshi Hino's stories sort of in chapters in here. So this is a really, really cool book. If you're uh, more than just somebody who wants to read horror manga, but you want to know more about horror manga, this is a really, really good educational text, and it's just got a lot of Hideshi Hino and Suhiro Maruo art in it. So you can see some really cool, big, blown-up images of their manga art and uh, some full-color stuff. Really, really good book. This is super obscure. This is something that's not even necessarily expensive so much as it is uncommon. Uh, I would be more worried about even being able to find a copy to buy than the price that it's going to cost you. Back when I bought this, it was like, I don't know, 40 or $50, but I've only seen two copies of these listed ever. But uh, I'm in Canada, so I don't get to see everything that's listed in the States. A lot of stuff doesn't come up on my eBay or my Amazon uh, if a seller doesn't ship to Canada. 
So uh, you may be able to find more of these in the States. Let me know if uh, you can find some copies listed because uh, it'd be nice if more people could get their hands on these. So that does it for the manga of Hideshi Hino, but I have a whole bunch of other cool Hino related stuff. So the first thing I have to show you is this. This is a genuine official licensed Hideshi Hino t-shirt of Hell Baby. And the cool thing about this is it's not a Japanese t-shirt. This is an English Hell Baby licensed t-shirt. So this came out way back, uh, I believe in the 90s. So the cover just says all style apparel. So I'm not sure if that's just the base shirt that this was printed on, but nevertheless, that is the brand. And this is just a really cool shirt. It's in like perfect condition. It's never been washed seemingly. It's not cracking or anything like that. So I believe this is an extra large shirt. Uh, I'm not an extra large, I'm a pretty scrawny dude, so I can't wear this, but uh, I didn't really buy it with the intention of wearing it. I thought it was a really cool item to just display, and I've never seen another one of these, so uh, it's uh, just something cool to have. So next up, I have a whole bunch of Hideshi Hino collectible figures. So these are actual licensed action figures that were produced by Planet Toys. And the first one I've got, I actually have two of, which is the green edition of the Zoroku figure. So this is a popular character from Hideshi Hino's stories about a unfortunate person who was driven out of their town for being kind of odd and he has to live in this terrible shack and he eventually just turns into this gross, bloated monster. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a very uplifting tale, but uh, very cool figures. Very nice detail on them. It's a shame I can't take them out of the boxes, but uh, I'm a collector, so you know. Next up, we have this Frankenstein character. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually Frankenstein or just a Frankenstein-esque character, uh, as it doesn't have an English name on the back like some of them do. But uh, nevertheless, very cool character. This is the purple version of this one. Next up, we have a black Zoroku figure. This is a limited to 300 copies one, so this is a rarer figure than the other ones. And we have the original color version of Zoroku. So this is the way he is depicted in the color title pages and such from the manga. So this is the sort of original version of him. So this is probably one of my favorite Hideshi Hino figures that I've got. So next up we have Hell Baby in both the red and the original green colors. So these are really, really cool figures. I think the green Hell Baby is probably my favorite figure that I've got as uh, it's just such an iconic character and in the original colors. I just think it's so cool. So these are some really nice looking high detailed figures. And I have one more figure to show you guys and it is by far the most special figure that I've got and it might be the most special item in my entire horror manga collection. This is something I acquired very recently and that is a signed black limited to 300 copies Hideshi Hino Zoroku figure. So don't worry, it's not this yellow. It is in absolutely perfect condition. This is just the yellowing on the case that it is being kept in right now. And just for you guys, I'm gonna open it up so you can really see what this looks like. So there it is, up close and personal. That is Hideshi Hino's vertical signature there. And this is just something I've never seen before. I've only ever seen this one signed figure of his available to anybody in the West. I picked this up uh, on Mandarake. I'm sure you're tired of me mentioning that website by now, but there is just so much cool stuff on there. So uh, I got this from there. I paid, I kid you not, about $60 after all my expenses for this thing, including shipping and import fees. So this was less about paying a lot of money for something really rare and more about just putting in the time and checking repeatedly, always seeing what's available on that website. And a tip for you guys looking for rare stuff on that website from horror manga authors or really any manga authors or anything like that, uh, if you look up that manga author on Wikipedia and you find the actual Japanese kanji version of their name and you copy that and paste it into the search bar on Mandarake, you will find more results than if you just type their English name. You'll find most results if you type the English name, 
but there are listings on there that are only in Japanese, so you'll find additional stuff. And that was how I found this. So yeah, really special item, and I mean, just having one Hideshi Hino autograph is insane, and having a second one is something I never dreamed that I would be able to have, so this is definitely the uh, crowning jewel of my collection. And that's basically all of the Hideshi Hino stuff in my collection, however I have one more thing to show you, and this is something that the people who watched my really old version of my original manga tour that uh, never turned into a series, though it was supposed to, I mentioned this book in that series, and that is Scary Manga. This is basically a cover gallery of old-school horror manga that also includes their titles, the authors, the year they came out, and a brief synopsis of what that manga was about. So this includes the works of Hideshi Hino, as well as a lot of other artists like Shinichi Koga, who were old-school uh, horror manga authors way back when horror manga was in its very early stages. And a lot of these were uh, anywhere between real, like, horror horror, like Hino's work, to more like uh, almost Nancy Drew or Scooby-Doo kind of like mystery shoujo manga and stuff like that that have ghosts and ghouls in them. Uh, so it's really cool to see all this old school artwork. All these covers, which are just absolutely beautiful. So these are some Shinichi Koga covers. Shintaro Goto. Just all kinds. So this is a really good way to learn about some very obscure horror manga authors that just don't get a lot of mention. You always hear Hideshi Hino, you hear Kazuo Yumez, you hear the newer artists like Junji Ito, and when you go to the really old stuff you'll even hear about like Shigeru Mizuki and artists like that. But you really don't hear these artists that weren't necessarily the pioneers of this genre, but really contributed to its popularity, and they were the artists that really filled out what was there and were super influential, like Shinichi Koga in particular, Junji Ito has cited as being an influence on his work. So it's really, really cool to be able to flip through and see their full color original covers. And uh, yeah, this book is hard to find nowadays. It used to be really cheap, and not because it was plentiful, but because nobody knew that it existed. Uh, this is something that I just happened to stumble across on Amazon one day, and I can tell you most keywords you can type in to try to find horror manga are not going to pull this book up. So uh, it was a really just chance thing that I stumbled across, and I told a few people that it's out there, I made some posts on Reddit, I had it in that original video that I put out uh, ages ago, and since then, People have bought a lot of the copies that were there, and now it costs a good bit more. Last time I checked, it was like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 dollars, so it might even be more now. But uh, definitely worth getting. It's pretty thick, and it's got just a ton of covers. So definitely worth the money. I highly recommend this. And that is it for the Hideshi Hino portion of my manga tour. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you saw some cool stuff that maybe you weren't expecting to see or maybe you didn't know about. And uh, for those of you who don't read horror manga and just watch these because you think it's cool, I hope you saw something cool. I'm glad there are people watching these that don't necessarily read horror manga and uh, might give horror manga a try because of seeing this. So next time we're going to do the Kazuo Yumei's shelf, or Yumeizu, he goes by both. But uh, yeah, that is just a ton of manga that I've got. That'll be another longer episode like this one. And then from there we're going to get into probably shorter episodes and some of the more obscure manga artists as we go through the rest of the shelves. So hope you guys had fun, and uh, good night. <laughs>